Hello, welcome, and an excellent evening I wish to you. And tonight we will have another look at homebrew graphics cards. And maybe you followed my live streams where we built uh, this CGA clone card. Um, this is basically a replica of IBM's color graphics adapter, which was the graphics card that came with the very first PC in 1981. Um, you had the option between the monochrome display adapter, which could produce high-resolution text, but only in monochrome, obviously, usually back then on green, amber, or white monitors. And uh, the other option was the color graphics adapter. And this is the color graphics adapter Redux by HKZ. And you can find it on GitHub. We put it together on a live stream and uh, it comes with this uh, composite out and TTL RGB output, which you can use um, on either older home computer monitors, such as the 1084 by Commodore or the CM8833 by Philips, similar things um, that have TTL inputs, uh, which I showed off in another video. Or you can use a uh, converter such as, let me grab it, um, this one here, the RGB to HDMI, which is a Pi Zero with a special hat on top, um, which has here the TTL input and then the HDMI output. And yeah, it's pretty neat. We will see it in action later on. This works all very fine. Um, both the MDA card and the CJA card are built around the Motorola MC6845CRT controller, uh, which was a uh, video chip that was used by quite a few machines, terminals, computers, etc., in different varieties. The amazing part about this is that the whole card just uses this one specialty IC, and down here there's a row of DRAM chips. Here I have 64 kilobyte of DRAM, but the original CGA card would use only 16 kilobytes of VRAM. However, those VRAMs are very hard to get, um, which is why we got these ones. But there's one problem. They are Chinese fakes, basically, or not fakes, but they have been relabeled, basically. Um, they all look very wonky a bit, but they tested well in um, uh, the retro chip tester. A friend tested those for us and they work fine in the CGA card. So that's good to know. Um, all the other stuff, there's one EEPROM here or EEPROM, which stores the uh, character set. There's no BIOS on this card. Uh, all is done by the PC. Itself, um, the IBM PC has BIOS routines to support this and also the MDA card, so there's nothing regarding that. All the rest are standard TTL logic chips, bus drivers, things like that. So this is all discrete logic, which is quite amazing. And you can basically look at the schematics and figure out how everything is done. Pretty nice. It also has composite out, which is nice. You can put it into a television and um, get composite artifact colors on NTSC televisions. It has a light pen input, which was a thing back in the day. And that's that, and an internal video header for the uh, PC portable, I think. That's that, and now we come to what I actually want to show you today. And it's this beast here. This is the monochrome graphic and printer card, in parentheses Hercules, but it's covered here by the quartz crystal. And it's a very similar project. It's also a homebrew project. And um, yeah, it's not yet open source on GitHub or anything, but the author uh, by the name of Arek um, plans to publish this. He wants to fix one or two minor issues uh, that are here. Um, there's one solder bridge I had to make. Um, this is missing in this design, so um, 
not even a botch wire, but I had to bridge two pins. And one or two other things with the silk screen, I think. But other than that, um, I'm basically the beta tester of this. And this is a clone of one of the early Hercules cards. Um, I think it's not even the original Hercules card, but a clone of the original Hercules card. The design is very similar to that of the CGA card. Uh, there is the Motorola 6845 again. There is an EEPROM for the fonts. And one addition that we have on the monochrome cards, both on the MDA as well as on the Hercules card, they always came with a printer port um, to save slot spaces. Basically, you would get the monochrome card, which would be for office use. You would do um, with a high res text, you could do very good word processing and stuff like that. So you would also need a printer port and so both were bundled into one card. But other than that, there's also only TTL logic and bus drivers, um, discrete logic, plus uh, 64 kilobytes of RAM, which are actually standard on the Hercules card because it supports two video pages um, for yeah, front and back buffers or something like that. So that's pretty nice. There were a few caveats when assembling this. Um, once this thing goes open source, hopefully in the next months at some point, uh, and you want to assemble this, definitely make sure to follow the bill of materials, the bomb, to the letter, um, because I had a problem. There are three 74 LS04s on this board. Here's one in U9. And I accidentally put 74 ALS 04 in there. And the card didn't work. It produced very weird uh, stripes and things. And only after I triple checked my parts, I noticed that I wasn't using 74 LS 04 TTL logic chips, but 74 ALS 04, which normally shouldn't be a problem because I think ALS is slightly faster or something. But the different uh, logic chip series like LS, HCT, and etc., etc., F and S have different applications actually. And this chip up here is doing the clock generation for the whole board, and it will fail uh, when you're using the ALS variant. There's another O4, uh, which is this one here. I think this goes to the RAM chips or something which is fine. I left the ALS in here and there's a third one somewhere over here, I think. Can't find it right now. Some of the sill screens are hardly readable, although many of the chips are brand new, but there are also some, some older ones, new old stock and refurbished, whatever. Uh, yeah. Some problems that you might have in assembling this is getting the RAMs again. This is These are the same kind of RAMs that I had on the CJ card. However, this time uh, from Goldstar branded, all from the same manufacturer and they work fine. I tried to use the China relabeled ones, didn't work. I think it's because they the Hercules card seems to have more strict timing considerations and requirements than the CJ card which was just fine. Um, but here you, at least I needed a proper name branded DRAM chips. Also, you will need one SRAM chip. Uh, I've got the NEC D446C at 300 nanoseconds here. That is totally fine because the SRAM on the Hercules and the MDA, maybe the MDA card, not sure, but definitely on the Her um, Hercules card stores the character attributes. In text mode, it will store if something is underlined, if it's uh, extra bright or the background colors or something like that. And that is stored in this and all the characters are stored in these. Another thing, there are quite a few S-series chips like this 74S112. So those are faster and uh, you can't use the LS variant here, I think. So um, definitely make sure to use the proper things. There's also a 74S64 up here, for example. But as I said, adhere to the bill of materials and you should be fine. 
Uh, there is also two different positions for the uh, sockets, for the TTL and the uh, printer port, which is pretty nice uh, depending on which you ordered or can get your hands on, basically. And that's that. Again, this is a very, very neat uh, design. It's in theory supports up to um, 256 kilobit uh, EEPROMs. However, if you use the 256 one, then you need to uh, write the ROM in a particular manner. So I suggest I've got, I think, a 64 kilobit. Yeah, this is a 64 kilobit EEPROM. If you can get your hands on that, take that. It even supports the 2301 and 2732 ROMs, but those are even more rare, but would be like period correct. And you can also use the address selector here to switch between different uh, fonts in the ROM if you're using a larger ROM, like the 64 kilobit. And you can use this to um, jump at the address select lines, the higher address select lines. And I think that's all there is to say about the card. Um, I think we should take it for a test drive in my 3D printed test bench. And uh, let's have a look at what the Hercules card can actually do under MS-DOS and uh, perhaps even Windows. So here we have the setup. The machine is already booted up. We have the Hercules graphics card over here in this 286 12 megahertz board with a Texas Instruments chipset and one megabyte of RAM. It's over here because there are two 8-bit slots on this machine and a couple of 16-bit slots. And um, some uh, some cards that are 8-bit will fit in the 16-bit slots as well, but the CGA Redux or original CGA and the original Hercules cards won't because they have pretty, yeah, what do you call it? Basically, um, the PCB extends all the way down here, which was fine in the original PC and XT, but is a problem on AT boards. Uh, so later cards like the Roland LAPCI will not have this problem. They will basically have a uh, cutoff here, even though they are 8-bit, um, this part is missing. And otherwise, this, this will collide with certain chips that are on the board um, or, for example, the 16-bit slots. So that's why I'm using this particular board here. Then we have the replica Adlib card by TubeTime, uh, still the original version with the Adlib logo. Uh, let's see if I can put it a little bit in view here. I think you can see it over there. And we have the BIOS, one of the Chinese BIOS postcards, a tiny little floppy and hard disk controller with a compact flash card inserted. 64 megabytes, that's enough so that it doesn't require any BIOS extensions. And it's large enough for a couple of tests. Um, yeah, MS-DOS 6.22 is installed and we can have a little look around. Maybe um, first we'll check out Windows, because actually Windows runs reasonably well on a 286 with a Hercules card. Of course, the one megabyte of RAM is slightly meager, let's say. Uh, two megabytes would definitely be better. This board actually supports SIP style memory, and I could um, also solder in regular SIM sockets but I would have to desolder them from some other board first. So currently we only have uh, one megabyte in DIP memory in there, but that's a project for the future to put in real SIM sockets. With the SIM sockets in place, we probably won't be able to use uh, this 8-bit slot and would have to move here anyway. But then we could upgrade this machine to at least four megabytes, probably even 16 megabytes, which is the maximum amount on a 286. But 4 megabytes would already be very plentiful for a 286. Uh, okay, so this is the program manager here. Uh, as you know it, uh, the icons, of course, look a little bit different and um, there is no colors, there's no grayscale. Everything that can be done is done by dithering, basically. 
But as you can see, File Manager works. Um, we only have like half a megabyte of free memory, but that's actually good enough to start something like uh, write or paintbrush. Let's see, uh, do we have our applications? We have some MS DOS stuff here. And yeah, let's first fire up write and see how long that takes. That works actually reasonably well. And we can have a look if there are some example documents. There are. Well, there's something about the Vinini, I guess, which is interesting. Never seen that. But as you can see, it's uh, pretty slow. But I think that's more to do with the 286 and the limited memory than, for example, the Hercules card, which seems to be doing all right. Of course, it's not the fastest card in the world. But um, I think, yeah, you could somehow work with this if you were, yeah, in the late 80s or something. That would definitely work. Although uh, when Windows 3.1 was around like 1991, 1992, you probably rather wanted to have a VGA card and a 386 at the very least, even if you couldn't afford a 46. Let's check uh, the media player. Uh, we have uh, Kenyan.mid obviously here. Oh, I still have the uh, US keyboard. And that looks like this. And we can listen to Kenyan.mid on a 286 in Hercules. But enough of that, um, let's try out some MS-DOS. I've loaded up the DOS controller here, which is a super tiny uh, clone of the Norton Commander. And yeah, as you can see, the text is really sharp, really high res. We can even start QBasic or something and do some coding. We can load up one of the example programs that come here. Gorilla Buzz won't work because it requires at least an EGA card. But we could, for example, play Nibbles, which is kind of like Snake clone. And yeah, it, uh, I think, works perfectly fine. And to be honest, this is exactly the stuff I would have done as a kid. Tinkered around with the installation of MS-DOS and Windows and tried out all the programs that were on there. I was lucky enough to have a VGA card back then, but even if I only had a Hercules card, I guess I could have had some fun. Although I would have been very envious of my friends, obviously. Games will work fine as well. Um, let's take Zachary Kraken, which supports Hercules just fine, and it would have been very period correct because Zachary Kraken is from 1988, and many people would still have an Her a Hercules card and monochrome monitor, obviously.
Yeah, that's Segment Kraken, and as you can see, it is definitely playable, and I think Lucasfilm did a pretty decent job of creating the graphics in such a fashion that you can actually see something uh, on a monochrome monitor. There are a few things that are a bit hard. For example, the cash card down here under the desk is very hard to see. In the normal game, it's green and you can pre pretty easily make it out, but there's only a slight outline visible here. But there are worse games than Zagman Kraken for monochrome graphics. Let's have a look. This is Space Quest 3 from Sierra Online. You all know it. And um, the intro sequence actually looks relatively decent, I would say, and is fluidly animated. So this is pretty nice. However, some of the graphics and especially some text that is visible in the game will be hard to read because here uh, the 16 EGA colors get dithered as well, obviously. But the graphics are much finer, let's say, um, compared to the more evenly colored Zack McCracken. So some things will be very hard to read. Uh, some of the text here, as you can see, uh, the, will merge with the star background, which is of course an issue if you don't design, especially for the Hercules graphics card. You would have needed some kind of black outline or some, some other means to increase the contrast here, because you only can work with white and black. But you have the higher resolution of 720 by 350 uh, compared to the 320 by 200 that you have on the EJ and CJ card for the games. The normal in-game graphics look relatively fine. Um, I think there's nothing much wrong with that. The in-game text is usually presented in pop-up windows, so it's very readable. But in a few places there will be issues with the readability. But other than that, I think uh, you could have played Space Quest 1, 2, 3, the King's Quest series up until part 4 pretty well on a Hercules machine. The 286 would have been a perfect machine to do that because it's uh, much faster than the XT or PC of its era. And I think, yeah, for people who couldn't afford a color monitor or and a VGA or EGA card, this would have been a perfect uh, thing to have. And other than that, um, yeah, I think this homebrew card works exceptionally well. Um, I, it took me a couple of weeks to figure out together with Eric what the problems were with the chips and the uh, BIOS that was in flashed incorrectly on my part. But I think once this uh, whole thing goes online for you to build yourself, you will be, um, yeah, on the safe side because all the kings have been worked out. And I can totally um, recommend using this card in your retro computer XT or 286 class. I think anything above that might be um, a little bit stupid to do, more or less. However, one additional thing that you have to keep in mind is you can install a Hercules card together with a CGA VGA or EGA card and have two monitors at once on an MS-DOS machine, which can be used, for example, um, in Turbo C, which I use in my Let's Code MS-DOS series. And um, basically you can have the monochrome card where uh, Turbo C runs and then your graphics that you're coding run on the EGA and VGA and you can interactively debug using the integrated debugger, which is pretty nice. I used that back in the 90s when I was uh, a student to be able to do coding and debugging under MS-DOS without any multitasking. Um, and that's actually pretty neat. Yeah, so that's it for today, I think. Um, thank you very much for watching. Share, like, and subscribe as usual. Share your comments, etc. And um, I will put a link to the uh, repository once this thing gets available. Uh, you can also try and uh, have a look out for this thing yourselves or get one of the many Hercules clone cards that you can still get on eBay. Uh, there's much smaller variants, not these huge TTL graveyards. 
But that's it for today. Um, thank you so much and see you next time. Bye.